To gain votes, members of Parliament from the Prime Minister down flirt with bizarre cults such as the Exclusive Brethren, who believe they will be soon snatched up bodily to heaven, or the gang that are convinced the invisible Jesus returned to earth in 1917 and now rules the world together with nine Jehovah's Witness elders. To add insult to injury, instead of questioning the sanity of people who believe such nonsense, our politicians are called them more respect than citizens who ask for proof of their mad assertions. To be an atheist, to be an atheist, which as Karen mentioned, has no meaning other than a disbelief in gods, is to be free mentally and physically. Our minds are not tortured by the effort of believing the unbelievable. We don't live in fear of offending a jealous God and being consigned to an eternity of torment. Our sex lives are devoid of God-inspired guilt and we can rejoice in the knowledge that we are naturally evolved mammals, as much a part of nature as kangaroos. <laughs> Paradoxically, perhaps, the certainty that this is the one and only life we're going to get makes life infinitely precious. It encourages us to make the most of every moment, to live the best life we can while doing the least harm to other life, and to grow old without regrets or fear of death. But what chance are today's kids of enjoying such freedom when they grow up? Every school in the land will soon have fundamentalist Christian chaplains instead of properly trained guidance counsellors. Goodbye rational inquiry and innocent fun, hello ignorance and guilt and fear. Young children have blotting paper brains that soak up zillions of facts, ideas and methods of thinking. If they're taught that the God myths are true, despite a total lack of evidence, the result is a dead spot in their reasoning abilities. From then on, any statement, no matter how ridiculous, will be accepted as long as it's associated with the word God. They'll believe in a God of love, even though he sends pandemics and refuses an abortion to a raped 12 year old girl. They'll believe in a God of peace, despite his priests blessing tanks, warships, bombers, and sending chaplains to bless soldiers whose job it is to kill a man. This brainwashing doesn't stop when kids leave school. Religious beliefs are enforced and reinforced when governments support religion's claims to the ownership of marriage, death, openings of parliament, school assemblies and memorial services, and when they consult religious leaders on policy. Perverting a child's natural reasoning powers by indoctrination with supernatural nonsense is child abuse. If religions are so certain they are right, why don't they wait until the child is mature? Is it because they know that rational adults dismiss their tales as the products of deranged minds? Instead of being taught unquestioning faith, our children should study philosophy and compare the claims of the thousands of religions that have clogged human brains for millennia. Most importantly, they should be taught that claims made without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. Perhaps the most galling thing about religions is that they've hijacked morality. Despite their appalling history of intolerance, cruelty, torture and abuse, they continue to assert that they are the source of all that is good. But religions have no more claim to knowledge or practice of good and bad, right and wrong, than any other power-hungry gangs. Modern Christianity has belatedly and very reluctantly borrowed some ethical jargon from liberal thinkers, but they still have no real concept of fairness, decency, compassion and justice. If they had, they would not have demanded exemption from the anti-discrimination laws. They would not consider women to be inferior to men. They would know that love takes many forms, and they wouldn't be so obsessed with sex, claiming that sexual acts not only producing a baby, but the virtue. The virtues of kindness, generosity, consideration, affection, honesty, hospitality, compassion, charity, humour, gentleness, equality, listening, egalitarianism, respect for the elderly, love of children, diligent respect for the land, plants and animals, all derive from necessity. They are logical behaviours if humans are to survive in a natural world, and a natural world that is indifferent to their needs. It seems many people have an innate need to believe in gods. That's okay. Atheists have no wish to deny them that comfort. However, believers must accept that we have the right not to believe. And we must assert that right. 
Because if unbelievers are fearful and closeted, religion will get stronger and more arrogant, and even more insistent that their prejudices become law. If we hope to retain democracy and the somewhat reduced personal freedoms remaining after the introduction of the anti-terrorist laws, then a total separation of religion and state is essential. Rudyard Kipling said, the individual has always had to struggle to keep from being overwhelmed by the trial. To be your own man is hard business. If you try it, you will be lonely often and sometimes frightened. But no price is too high to pay for the privilege you own yourself. Thank you very much. Uh, go out and have a good time and <laughs> love one another. <laughs>